Katrina, Sandy, Harvey, Andrew. These hurricanes and their names are unforgettable. But did you ever wonder where those names come from? For large storms, names are important for public safety. They make communicating a threat easy for the public to understand. This is clearly a life-threatening situation. But it wasn't always that way. For example, a storm that damaged a boat named John might be known as John's Storm to a given town or village. Fast forward a bit to World War II, when military forecasters in the Pacific named tropical cyclones after their wives. The practice of naming storms caught on, and during the late 1940s, early 1950s, various agencies tried naming storms with real names or using the phonetic alphabet. That's Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, etc. By 1979, a system was adopted that alternates male and female names alphabetically. Today, those names are maintained by the World Meteorological Organization, or WMO for short. Okay, so how does this list work? Well, there are actually six alphabetical lists used in rotation. So the same list of names will appear every six years, unless the WMO's Tropical Cyclone Committee decides to strike a name permanently from the list because it is very costly or very deadly. Goodbye Andrew, and Katrina, and Sandy, and 79 other names since 1954. The procedure for adding a new name to the list seems to be fairly bureaucratic, at least by what's written on WMO's website. But know this, the goal is simple to let you know a possibly deadly hurricane or tropical storm is on its way. It turns out when a storm's named something like Irma or Wilma, we're much more likely to listen. <laughs>